Okay, so here we are back in Painter. Uh, the mask, the, op the opacity mask was, was stored off as a PNG or a TGA, one of the two. Uh, and I'm in my texture set settings menu. So the first thing I'm going to do here is in the channels area, there's this little plus sign. I'm going to hit plus. And this is some of it's off of the recording area, but I'm looking for opacity. And you can see now I've got my opacity uh, as the channel, a, a new channel here. And then I'm going to uh, go over to import, file import resources. We'll go to add resources. And I think it's going to be this one. So in the import resources menu, we need to set what kind of resource it is. In this case, it's a texture and I'm going to import into current session. Current session won't add it to yourself. If you add it to the shelf, that's going to be permanent for all projects. And if you add it to project untitled, as soon as I save this file, probably that would update, but that's probably your best option because then you'll just have it. Uh, but because I'm just doing some testing here, I'll just do current session. We'll hit import and you can see there it is. It's in my textures and in order to get it up, there's a couple more things I've got to do. I've got my layers. I know these are getting kind of kind of stacked up here. So maybe we'll pull properties, put properties over there. Texture set list, we don't need to worry about that. So I'll close it. See if I can find how to how to dock this. There we go. All right, texture set settings. Uh, we've got now opacity here. And I'm gonna go to layers make a new layer. We can delete the default one. This is a fill layer. And in my properties, you can see I've got color as we would expect, metal, roughness, normal, and height. And now we have this new one, opacity. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag my texture into the opacity. Now you will see nothing actually happening here in the workspace. And that's because we're using a shader that doesn't know that it needs to look for opacity. So right now, this is uh, this is our shader settings. And we're uh, by default, we're going to be using the PBR Metal Rough Shader. So I'm going to select that, and you can see we get this drop down. So there's a couple in here that are going to support opacity. The first one over here is going to be, it's, it's off the recording area, but it's called Alpha Test. And so what Alpha Test does is it looks to see if the texture is above or below, I think, 0.5. If it's above 0.5, it makes it opaque, and if it's below 0.5, it makes it transparent, and that looks pretty good, but I don't believe it works in an iRay. Yeah, so if you wanna use this in iRay, which I imagine you probably do, what we wanna do is use the next one over here, which is gonna be PBR uh, with alpha blending, and it'll give you a little bit of a softer edge, which is very nice. We'll go to close that, and if you look at it in mode, it will be supported here in IRA. So that is the, uh, the, I'm not sure if it's quick and easy, but hopefully that doesn't take too long. It isn't too complicated. Uh, let me go ahead and show you what this looks like with the, the full cicada mesh with the back facing wings added in. That uh, will go to edit, project configuration, select, we will grab uh, cicada low, hit OK. And you can see it will automatically apply the bakes to all the stacked geo, which now exists, stacked in the UVs. And it looks a little crunchy through here, but that's just uh, some artifacting that goes away once. Let me go ahead and get rid of that background there. Make this a little bit more pleasant to look at. So you can see that it actually looks like it's got some thickness to it because of that little beveled edge that we added way back when. And it's supposed to feel pretty thin, but it certainly doesn't, I don't think it, it feels, let me get set the light up here, like a 2D plane, right? It still, it still gives the illusion of having some, uh, some depth to it. And it's super cheap relative to the rest of the geo. So if we hop back over to uh, painting and turn on the wireframe. Uh, it always takes me a second to find it. You can see how low poly that wing is. So I think this is a really effective way to, to handle this kind of problem. Whenever you have something that's like super thin and you just want it to look good and you don't want to spend a bunch of polys on it. Um, 
You could use this for feathers or, I mean, really, I guess the applications are endless, but um, good trick. And uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you how the, the my file and the ZBrush scene are set up when you've got a, a fairly complicated uh, scene like this. I did kind of talk about it in a very early tutorial series relative to this one called 3D Foundations. Uh, but if you didn't, uh, you didn't get through that one, then uh, I'll just give you a little cheat sheet on how to set it up.